Hello my little willies. This is the video number two of our tutorial how to knit a baby v-neck rattan cardigan. You will find the link to the first video down below this video on the description box as well as the written instructions on my website sewwoolly.net. To knit the left front we are going to cast on 27 stitches. The left front is the side where the bottom holes are located. It's just a mirror of the right front. And we are going to make four bottom holes. So now, as we did before for the back and the right front, we are going to knit seven rows in one by one rib stitch. You will need your marker. So, first and every other row, knit four. Place your marker. This will form the edge of the left front. And you have to knit these four stitches in every row. And now comes the repeat. Pour one, knit one. Pour one, knit one. And in the row with pearl one. And remember that I do it through the back loop only on this first row to avoid a huge loop there. Second and every even row, the repeat is net one, pearl one, net one, pearl one. Continue doing this, and in with net one, slip the marker, net four. The third row is the same as the first one. And here on the fourth row, we're going to make the first bottom hole. So we start with net one, purl one, and repeat. Net one, purl one. And then with net one, slip the marker. knit one, bind off one stitch, that means you knit one stitch, you knit the following, and pass this stitch, the slipped one, over the last one, and knit one. Fifth row, we have to knit and also cast on the stitch that we closed. So we have again four stitches. So we knit two, we cast on one stitch, keep it tight, and knit the last one. We have four stitches again. Slip the marker and just read your knitting. Purl one, knit one, ending with purl one.
the sixth row is the same as the fourth row. We start with net one, purl one, and then with net one, slip the marker and net four. That was a stitch we just cast it on. You just have to knit it as the others. And there you have your bottom hole. And seventh row, like the first one, knit four, slip the marker, and now comes the repeat. Four one, knit one. Ending with purl one. From now on, we are going to knit a section in stockinette stitch, always keeping these four stitches for the edge. So we're going to knit on the right side of the work, and you know it because you have the yarn from the cast on on the left side of your work, and we're going to purl every wrong side row. So to recap, we have knitted seven rows in, in one by one rib stitch and we have made one bottom hole. Now we're going to knit 28 rows in stockinette stitch, always knitting the right side uh, rows and purling the wrong side ones, and we are going to make three more bottom holes. So first row of these 28 rows, we are going to knit every stitch. Second row, we are going to knit four. Slip the marker and pour the rest. Third row, now comes the second button hole. We are going to knit every stitch. Slip the marker and knit one and bind off one stitch. That means knit one, knit the following one and pass the slipped stitch over the last one, and knit one. Fourth row, we just need to cast on one stitch to replace the one we closed, so we knit two, cast on one stitch, Net one. You have four stitches again, slip the marker and purl the rest. Now we have four rows of the 28 we need to knit. You will keep doing as we did before until you complete the 28 rows, but you're going to make a bottom hole again on the 13th row and on the 23rd row. So you will have four bottom holes at the end. Always knitting all the stitches on the right side of the work and purling the stitches on the wrong side. But remember you have to keep these four stitches for the edge. Then we are going to make the, the armholes and the raglan decreases. Now we have the 28 rows, this is 29th row, and we are going to bind off three stitches knitwise for the armhole. So knit two and pass one stitch over. Knit the following one, pass one stitch over and knit the last one 
and pass the stitch over. And knit every stitch until the end of the row. Now come the four rows for the raglan decreases as we did on the right front. The difference here is that we're going to make them on the wrong side of the work. So first row, knit four, slip the marker and purl two stitches together. Keep purling until there are only four stitches left. And purl two stitches together but through the back loop. And purl the last two. Second row, that's a rest row, we are not going to decrease. You just have to knit every stitch. Third row, we are going to knit four, slip the marker, and purl every stitch until there are only four stitches left. And here we're going to knit, sorry, to purl two stitches together through the back loop, as we did before. Ending with purl two. Next row is another rest row. We are going to knit every stitch. So repeat these last four rows until there are only 10 stitches left. Now you have only 10 stitches left and we are going to knit four, We don't need the marker anymore. Pour one. And now we're going to make a double decrease. Slip the next one as if to purl. Purl the next two together and pass the slipped stitch over. And purl two. Next row knit 8 stitches next row knit 4 And now comes another double decrease. Slip one as if to purl, knit, sorry, purl two, and pass the stitch over, ending with purl one. There are six stitches left. On the next row, we knit those six stitches. Next row, knit one, and now slip one as if to purl, purl the next, and pass the slipped stitch over, and purl three. Next 
next row, net one, net two together, net two. There are only four stitches left. Now we are going to knit 11 rows in garter stitch. That means knit every stitch for 11 rows. And we can bind off knitwise on the 12th row. To bind off, net two and pass one stitch over. Knit the following, pass the stitch over, and knit the next one, pass the stitch over. Now you can cut the yarn, leaving a tail about 10 centimeters long, and pull the yarn through the loop. And our left front is finished. Before joining the pieces, we need to let them soak in, in water for a while and then remove the excess of water, squeezing them gently. Put them on a towel and flatten them. You can fix them with some pins and finally let them air dry. Now we are going to join all the pieces using invisible seams, but first I like to sew up the buttons. Then we will be joining the sleeve to the right or left front, just up to there, leaving this little piece or stripe for later on. We will join it to the neck and then we will join the sleeve to the back. So facing the right side of the work in both parts, the sleeve and the front, we are going to join the armholes first. So secure both pieces, joining them through the most exterior part, the corner. And now put your yarning needle below this first little V in one side and before the same little V on the other side and repeat. Now we're going to join the raglan decreases in both sides. So we need to find the little bars between the first and the second stitch. Maybe you need to stretch a little bit so you can see the little bars, horizontal bars. So once you find them in one side, put your yarning needle below them normally I like to do two on one side and two on the other side, like this, and do the same in the other side. When you reach the top of the sleeve, Leave it alone and do the same, joining the sleeve to the back of the jacket. Now we will be joining the little stripe that we left on hold to the neck. 
So put your darning needle below this little V and below the little bump from the stripe. The little V on the sleeve and this little bump on the stripe. And repeat. You will get to the center of the neck and when you have done the same with the other part, now we need to join the stripes together. So put your darning needle below the little last bump on each side. And keep doing so until you reach the top. Now it's time to weave in the end. Use the same technique to join the front and the back. First, secure the most exterior part, the corner of both pieces, and then find the little horizontal bars from one side and the other side, facing the right side of the work. So take two from one side and two from the other side and repeat until you reach the armhole. To join the armholes it's a little bit harder because there are more yarn and fabric there. But basically we keep doing the same. 
take your time, be patient, and always try to find these two little bars from one piece and the other piece. That's the better way to get the invisible seam. And keep doing so until you reach the cuff. And congrats! Your lovely cardigan is finished. Don't forget to take a look of the written instructions. Find the link below this video. And happy knitting! Thank you for watching. Good luck!